All right, we're going to do numbers 11 through 15 on this um, little video, this portion of the review. So here on this number 11, we are asked about the marginal distribution. And we've talked about marginal being in the margins. That's the overall rate at which, in this case, origin of car is happening. So the overall rate of American cars, overall rate of European cars, and overall rate of Asian cars. So we total together the students and staff to get the total, and that's how we then do that out of the overall total of 391 cars in the sample. Those then percents, make sure you round appropriately here and get answer D. Now this next one, same scenario, but we're talking about the conditional distribution. So it's not overall rate that American, European, and Asian happen. It's happening, what is that distribution of origin conditional upon you being a student? So that's out of these 199 students here. If it had said conditional distribution of origin for staff, then you would be using this column here of the staff data. So when I did that, I need to fix the font on that one there, you can see then that those percents are those in answer choice D. All right, so now number 13, you cannot just willy-nilly um, eyeball these box plots to see if those look as though they are the right ones. You must put this data in and actually compute the five number summary and go and um, compute the IQR so that you must get the fences so you can see is there any data above the upper fence and the upper fence 115.5 so no upper outliers no data above the upper fence or is there any data below the lower fence and in this case nothing is below 19.5 therefore there are no outliers so see here on numbers four and five box plots you can see they acted as though there was an outlier here at uh, the 99 or at the 32 but that is not the case if you did your fences properly all right now let's talk mosaic plots big deal because i actually want you to make sure you can accomplish identifying and interpreting what the x-axis is meaning and interpreting what the y-axis is meaning because what i have here these questions so look at the answers to, to these questions 14 the two categorical variables employee tenure which means how long you've been at the job at the location that workplace and then of course age group it is categorical even though they're number ages because they are grouped in a little chunk of which is a category of ages okay and the largest section of course is that um, this big blue section here which is the uh, proportion of employees that have worked there less than five years who are age 25 to 29 all right and so then is the tenured uh, employees with more than 20 years experience that has the least proportion of employees and that is yes because it is the smallest width of the x-axis um, question D is the same as B so I did not intend on that to be the case but let's look at E it's referencing the two sections that are starred. Well, if you look at these two sections, they are almost identical in size. It's, it's very difficult to tell. One is this, the width of this blue one looks about the same as the height of that red one and, and so on in the opposite, you know, the inverse. So here the height of the blue looks like the width of the red. So you cannot tell. That is one of the disadvantages of the mosaic plots is it could be different, difficult to tell and compare the sizes of those areas. Now, but more importantly, I want to make sure that you understand the interpretation of the X and the Y axis. So here we go. 
So first and foremost, you need to know that this, this x-axis width, the widths on the x-axis reference are out of, so out of the total employees sampled. So that is what makes that a marginal distribution because it's out of the total. We have the proportion of employees, the proportion of all employees sampled, okay, that worked less than five years, five to 10 years, 10 to 20, and more than 20, okay? So that is critical that you understand how to write that x-axis interpretation. Now, take a look at the y-axis. You know, in particular, I want you to look. Why is the width, or the, I'm sorry, the height of this blue section different than the height of this blue section? Because they both are the 30 to 34-year-olds. The reason those are different heights is because they are in different employee tenure categories. So that means the height of this is depending on which category of employee tenure you are in. That's a conditional probability. So the y-axis is conditional upon which category, employee tenure category, you are talking about. So the interpretation of the y-axis is the proportion of a particular employee tenure category that are is a particular age group, is the 25 to 29 year olds or 30 to 34 or so on and so forth, all those age groups. So that's a big deal. You've really got to think about that. Well, let's see if you can't transfer that here to this problem about the proportion of all airplane crashes. So here's the x-axis, which is marginal. The proportion of all airplane crashes that occurred during the landing, en route, at takeoff, standing, or unknown. Okay, so that's the marginal. Well, let's look at the conditional. So again, see this height here? Much different than this pink height here. The proportion of the phase in which the crash occurred the proportion of the phase in which the crash occurred that was in the weather. So these are different heights because this is the proportion of the landing phase crashes that occurred because of weather. This little pink one is the proportion of the takeoff crashes, the crashes that occurred during takeoff because, because of weather. Okay, so the proportion of each flight phase in which a crash occurred that is caused by human error, mechanical, weather, mechanical, unknown, or criminal reasons. Okay, here are the answers real quick for the questions that were asked here. The two categorical variables were the flight phrase that the cat, the flight phase that the crash occurred in, and the cause of the crash. So the proportion of the crashes that occurred during the landing phase were uh, that were caused by human error. That is, this is the largest section. Um, and you know what is the what is the cause of the most crashes? Of course, that's the human error because in almost every flight phase, the blue is the larger is larger than any other air um, than any other cause. I think this, um, the standing one is the only one that that's not the case in. Okay, and then the next questions, let's see here. Um, criminal had the least amount of crashes. And then, you know, what, so then they can decide what they need to do. Looks like they need to do more training. 
to reduce that human error, you know, but they might look into, is there other things that are causing that human error? Is it fatigue? Is it distractions? Um, what are the causes of that human error? Okay. And so then I'll just stop that video here and then I'll put uh, numbers 16 through 22 on the next video.